Hi everyone, welcome to another video. This is going to be part two of the acrylic painting process series that I'm currently doing. Um, but welcome, welcome back if you're new. I'm very excited to share this with you guys. This is something that I have been fully enjoying doing and I've been tweaking my acrylic painting process over the past few years and right now I am stuck in this process because I absolutely love it. Um, it is so much fun and it helps me to kind of really get started and not be afraid of a blank page. Um, sometimes when I see just a plain white background or whatever color background you're working on, for me I kind of freeze up and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like making that first mark, I don't want to make any mistakes. And this process kind of breaks me out of that and it kind of loosens me up. Um, so I really hope you enjoy this. There are a few additional supplies um, to the last video, part one, um, that you will need to build your layers. If you don't have the supplies, please don't worry about um, buying them. Be creative with what you have. Um, but really, if you have some acrylic paint, um, some colored pencils, some crayons, and a good glue and some scrap paper, you're gonna have everything around the house already. So you don't have to have the exact things that I have. I'm gonna show a couple different variations of what you can do just in case you might not have um, one of the supplies that I have. So yeah, without further ado, let's go over all the supplies you're gonna need to start building those layers for your acrylic process. I am going to be doing a total of four pieces. Um, so I did start by getting a piece of my favorite watercolor paper, which is the Fabriano, here I have it right here, which I showed um, in the last video, the Fabriano student watercolor, um, the 140 pound. This is just personal preference. It's very smooth. It's very water absorbent. There isn't a lot of buckling of the paper. There's very little at the end of the process, but I'm also gonna show you guys how to get rid of that at the end also. So definitely get your paper. You're also gonna need some of your favorite brushes. I just have the um, Artist, nope, Fine Touch, those are from Hobby Lobby. Filberts are my favorite, like I mentioned before. So just a couple different sizes I recommend. And then I also have a skewer to like push paint and inks around. I also have a old um, rewards card to kind of push things around also. You will also need, of course, paper towel for blotting and water to rinse your brushes. Any of your favorite acrylic paints, they can be craft paint, they can be um, like a higher grade acrylic paint but you'll definitely need acrylic paint and then you will also need some acrylic inks these are some of my favorite brands uh, the Daler and Rowney I really like these ones because they have fluorescence and I love me some fluorescent colors and then I also like Amsterdam this is probably my favorite color by Amsterdam the turquoise green and then I do have a couple of the Liquitex um, I don't use these as much as I use the Daler Rowney and the Amsterdam. If you don't have acrylic inks, um, that's the thing that I'm going to show you that you don't have to buy if you don't have them. I'm going to show you how you can just water down your acrylics and use them kind of like an ink. So there's that. What else do I have? Then you're going to need a variety of colors. Um, for mark making, I just have some colored pencils here. I have some regular old crayons, like a pack of Crayola. Um, I also have some oil pastels. Anything that's water soluble is, sorry, not water soluble, <laughs> not water soluble, so like it's not gonna spread around with water, um, is gonna be perfect for this process. And last but not least, you're gonna need um, a variety of painted papers, patterned papers, colored papers. 
I just keep this little bin next to me that I kind of add to. Hopefully you didn't see my address on that envelope. Um, I like to do, use tissue paper that I paint. Um, junk mail. This is just a piece of mail. I just paint everything. You don't have to be too particular or precious about what you use for your painted papers because you're just going to be ripping them up and gluing them and honestly covering 99% of it. Um, so yeah, just have fun, get loose, paint some papers. Um, ideally do different colors and different shades uh, so you can get a variation with your backgrounds. And I think that about, oh, one more thing. For a glue, um, there's a couple of different things that you can use. You could use, um, make a nice quality glue stick. I don't recommend using anything that is going to eventually peel up. So I do, if you're going to use a glue stick, get a good one. Um, my two favorite are the Yoohoo stick and do I have the other one. I don't have my other one, but the other one that I really like, it's by Elmer's. It's called Elmer's Extreme. Um, I really like that glue stick also. Um, so you can use a glue stick. I personally like to use matte medium to glue down my painted papers. If you don't have that, that's okay. Another alternative would be to use Mod Podge. I know I have Mod Podge over here. My desk is a mess. Oh yeah, we're filming from the painting desk today because it has my nice craft paper and <laughs> we're gonna make a mess. So maybe you should get something to cover your working surface also if that's a good idea. But yeah, you could use Mod Podge. This does leave a thicker coat on it um, than say a matte medium or using a glue stick but I have completely used Mod Podge for this process in the past because once you start painting over it, it really doesn't matter. Um, you don't really notice. It, the only thing I have noticed with using the Mod Podge is if I'm using, say, like more of a, a craft grade paint, when I paint over it, it does take a lot more layers to really kind of cover it up. And there is the possibility of your cheaper paints might flake off or crack off um but please use what you have experiment have fun um i've done this process so many times to get to um where i'm at and not everything turned out perfect but i learned a lot and it was a lot of fun and at the end of the day that's all that matters all right so let's start with our first layer let me make some room here so how I like to work, I like to work with all my cool colors together and all my warm colors together. I also, my personal preference is I like to use the acrylic inks for my first layer. Um, like I said, you can also use watered down acrylic paint. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll show you one of each. You're going to get a better coverage, I think, like a richer color from an acrylic ink than versus a watered down um, acrylic paint. But whichever, you're like I said, you're going to cover up 99% of it, so don't get like hung up on it being perfect or anything like that. So let's start with, let's do warm colors. Let me grab a couple more warm colored inks. Um, and maybe a yellow. Okay. So if you're not familiar with what colors are warm, which colors are cool, let me grab a little reference. Sorry, I probably should have grabbed this before we started. So when I was learning warm and cool colors, this was something that I had found on the internet and I printed it. 
Um, so basically your warm colors are going to include yellow, oranges, reds, and pinks. And then your cool colors are going to include your greens, blues, teals, and purple. To be honest, I feel like purple is kind of one of those colors that can go in either the warm side or the cool side. With that said, you need to be careful with what you mix with purple. Like you could mix the purple with the pink and it'll be beautiful. You can mix the purple with the blues and it'll be beautiful. Now, if you mix your purple and yellow, you're gonna get like a brown color that you might not like. Um, same with if you mix the purple with say the green, you're probably not gonna get a color that you like. So just be very careful where you put your purple. Um, I'll put that here. If you need a reference, I'm gonna take a little screenshot of which colors are technically warm, which ones are technically cool. Um, go ahead and do that for a future reference. But let's get started. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. Oh my gosh. This is optional. You don't have to do this. Um, just a squirt bottle with water in it. Um, this is something that I've newly been doing um, to start with. I don't always use the water, but completely up to you. If you don't have a squirt bottle, you can literally take your paintbrush, dip it in the water, and put it on your paper. All right, so I'm just going to spray some water. This really is the fun part. I'm just going to start dropping my inks all over. This is my favorite acrylic ink. This is the Rose Fluorescent. This one is a new one for me, but I love it. Oh, and that one, the Rose Fluorescent is De La Rowney. And this one is De La Rowney fluorescent red and this is another De La Rowney and it is processed yellow right. and like usually I will use one color and I will put it kind of all over and then I will have like two accessory colors and I will put it in three-ish spots then I prefer to use my skewer and you just start moving the ink around your paper. And this is where it gets a little messy because once it gets to your edges, it's going to run off your paper and that's okay, but definitely protect your surface. And then if you feel like one color is overpowering, you can wipe your skewer off just start over sorry there's some cat hair in there the cats are always in here getting hair in everything <laughs> if you have cats I'm sure you can relate so it does get a little tricky um, as your page gets more covered where you can hold the paper down so a lot of times I will grab a paintbrush and just use that so that I'm not getting my hands all gooky. I don't know if that's a word, but it is today. And as far as the cat hair goes, if you can see it, um, I'm just going to leave it and then I will brush it off when the paper is dry. And then another thing you can do, I don't know if you can see it, but on my edges, there's wells of water. You can take a, um, a dried off paintbrush and just gently kind of pick up some of that water so that it dries a little quicker. Or you can just leave it. Empty out that water you picked up. And just keep going back and taking off some of that excess. All right, so right now we have 
the first layer of this one complete. So now we just have to let it dry. If you want to speed up the drying process, you can use a blow dryer. But I am going to put this on my drying rack. And then I'm going to show you how you can do the same background with acrylic paint. And I will be right back. All right, and I'm back. I have my new sheet of paper and I have the acrylic paints that I am going to use is the golden thallow and then I'm going to use a teal and these are fluid acrylics um, and then I also have one high flow acrylic which is very very similar to acrylic ink again you don't have to use what I'm using I know golden can be um, a little more on the expensive side I will say though, I don't buy any of these unless I have um, a 40% off or a half off coupon for Joann's. So if you have a Joann Fabrics by you, um, definitely slowly build up your stash because you can get them half off, um, which is really nice. All right, so to do this one, let me just shake these up really good. So this process is just a little different. I like to use my card also as a little palette sometimes. So I'm just going to put a little pea size of my colors out. And since this one is already kind of more fluid, I'm probably not going to add water to this one. But since these are more thick, I will add water to them. I'm going to add just a little water to my paper. And then I'm going to get a bigger brush, put it in my water, get a lot of water. And then I'm just going to water down this paint and start putting it on my canvas or my paper. Again, we'll put this in a couple spots. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Make sure that color's out. Golden paints are very pigmented, so I really like to use them um, for this process because they do act more like inks. I don't want them to really dry. So since this process takes a little longer, you have to work a little quicker um, just so that your paints don't dry. But again, I'm going to get my skewer. You can also use a paintbrush to move this around. Um, I just like the way the skewer looks. Oh, I love that purple. Love, love, love. Just gonna add a little water so it moves a little better. When I started doing this process, the backgrounds were so beautiful to me that I have a whole book full of backgrounds that I couldn't bring myself to paint on. So beware, that might happen to you. But I think they're also a very good basis for abstract backgrounds or abstract pieces. which I've done abstract in the past, um, but I've just been more in love with doing my characters recently. But just follow the inspiration, that's for sure. And this is kind of drying up on me a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my brush, go back into my colors. Maybe there. All right, perfect. And that's your first layer done with your acrylic paint without using the inks. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera, cleaning my <laughs> brush here. But I am having a little pooling, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up.
All right, so first layer is done. I am going to let both of these dry and then I will move on and show you the gluing process for layer two. Okay, and I'm back with the dried paper. Um, I did kind of want to show you how I get rid of the cat hair. I literally just, you probably can't see in the camera, but I literally just rub it with my finger and it comes right off. Um, sometimes I have to use my nail a little um, to scratch it free, but it comes right off. So don't, don't fret if you get little pieces of hair or fuzz um, in the process of spreading your inks around. It rubs off very easy once everything is nice and dry. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to glue down um, pieces of ripped paper. So this is where all of your painted papers and paper scraps come in. I did go through and pick some warm colors and some cool colors. And this is what I chose for each one. I'm going to do for my cool colors, I'm going to do this bluish purple piece of an envelope. I have some painted tissue paper and a piece of painted paper. Honestly, how I accumulate all of my painted papers is I just keep a small little stash of random papers and um, tissue papers right next to me while I'm painting and if I have any paint left on my palette at the end when I'm done painting whatever it is I'm painting instead of just letting that paint dry um, and going to waste I will take whatever is left and just smear it around um, one of my little papers and then let it dry and then just throw it in my little stash for later and then for our warm piece I chose some old book pages that I painted with um, a jelly plate. This is some more tissue paper using up leftover paint and this is part of an envelope. This color, this pink, oh, love it. That has to be like one of my favorite colors to work with. I know it's not easy to like scan it or anything like if you wanted to reproduce your work but it just makes my heart so happy that color. Um, this is where you're going to need your glue. Again, I'm using the Golden Matte Medium. I also get this from Joann's and wait till I have a coupon. And as far as a brush goes, um, use a brush that you're not precious about. Don't use your nicer brushes with the Matte Medium or the Mod Podge because as you can see, I've used this a lot. Um, it can get gunked up and this is even with using a brush cleaner. It's just very hard on your brushes. So use an old junkie brush that you don't care about. So let's start with our warm piece. As you can see, once the paper dried from our inks, it kind of reflattened out. Remember how it was kind of rainbowing up in the middle? Um, that's what I really like about this paper. You might be like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this rainbow shaped paper? But once it dries, it, it flattens out pretty well. So I am just going to start ripping pieces. Um, you don't have to be very picky about it, just pieces you like. If you don't like the shapes, just throw them back in your um, paper box um, to use for later. And I kind of just play at this stage. I don't have a set number of pieces that I use. It's kind of just what I think looks good and I just kind of play around with it. Maybe there. I don't know if I like this one now. And you'll, you might find that too when you start playing. Um, you might think that something doesn't look good. Like I personally don't think that this looks great with that now and I thought that I would like it. Let's see how this orange looks. You could cut shapes if you wanted them to be um, more specific but again you're not going to see 99% of it and I do feel like when you have a ripped edge it glues a lot better to the paper than if you were to have a cut edge. I 
I don't know if I like this big orange piece. Maybe we'll do little pieces. And I try to do odd numbers. Um, so I have three, six, seven, eight, so I need one more piece. So I try to end with an odd number, but I never know if it's gonna be three, five, nine. Um, I kind of just play with that part. All right, that works for me. Then I'm going to start gluing them down, if I can get my glue open. There we go. Oh, another thing I didn't mention that can be helpful is just using another old credit card to kind of smooth everything out. Then I will just start gluing these down. And if it's not exactly how I had it before, I don't really worry about it. I do like to let, before I scrape it and flatten it, I do like to let the paper kind of absorb some of the moisture from the glue. I feel like it sticks a lot better and flattens out a lot better when I do that. So I'll usually do two pieces and then go back and flatten it. And I go from the center of my piece out. And just be very careful. especially in tissue papers you can rip your paper very easily like this little guy is a tissue paper center out just being very careful you don't have to press extremely hard And you kind of get the idea here. So I am going to fast forward to the end of me doing all of the glued pieces. <laughs> And then we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the warm colored one. We're going to do with the cool colored where we're just going to rip our pieces and place them and glue them. Again, I'm going to fast forward this part um, because you've seen me do this with the warm colored one and I will see you after. <laughs> And that is the completion of layers one and two. Um, in my next video, I will show you layers three and four. And then we will start planning out what we are going to um, paint on our surfaces. So I'm going to let these dry. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope that this has inspired you to try this process yourself. So until next time, have a great day. Bye.